Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the honor and privilege of uh, living to see a brand new year. A year you've made that we might rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you once again for being so kind and gracious to us all as individuals, as, an, as a nation, uh, throughout the year 2016. Thank you for bringing us into 2017. Thank you for all you have in store for us, individually and corporately. Thank you for your awesome presence with us in this service. Lord, bless our time together. Speak to us in the language we'll understand. Help us not to be forgetful hearers, but do us of your word. That it might be well with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go, good morning and God bless you. Happy New Year. Hallelujah. This morning I'm going to be sharing with us uh, my New Year message and it is titled, Put God First. Everybody say, Put God First. Turn with me to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to read just one verse, verse 6. The scripture said, in everything you do, put God first and it will direct you and crown your efforts with success. Amen? In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success success. What does it mean to put God first in all we do? I believe that it begins with our understanding that God is above all. That God is the beginning and end of all things. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the Almighty God. And our first responsibility is to submit ourselves to him. Amen? When we understand that, it leads us to number two way of putting God's first. And the, the, the second one is to put God's interest above and ahead of our own personal interest. Amen? Put God's interest above and ahead of our own interest. The third way of putting God first in our life is to make complete obedience to God a way of life. Complete obedience to God. Make it a way of life. When we understand and recognize that God is our creator, the almighty God. And we owe him our submission. We owe him our, our devotion. And we commit ourselves to obey him as a way of life. All the days of our lives, we see the mercy of God in a new and special way in our lives. We see the graciousness of God, the interventions of God in every aspect of our life. Another way of making God or putting God first in our life is to submit uh, oneself to God's will, totally to God's will, to God's plan and purpose for our lives, no matter what. To submit ourselves to God's will, to God's plan and purposes for our lives, at, that's no matter what. And know that that is what we are supposed to, live, uh, supposed to live for. Hallelujah. Somebody said, put it this way, he said, things of eternal value must have preeminence in our lives. Amen? That's a way of saying that God must be first in our life. That things of eternal value must have number one place in our lives. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose your own soul? He said, the life of man does not consist in the abundance of things which he has. So, living life from God's perspective, understanding life from God's perspective, 
and living in that light is putting God first in our lives. Praise the Lord. How do we put God first in our lives? Number one, find out what matters most to God and sink yourself in the pursuit of it or its fulfillment. Find out what matters most to God and sink yourself in the pursuit of its fulfillment. The Bible tells us in Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. So, what is God's priority? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all other things shall be added unto you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, we are told to pray that the kingdom of God will come and that his will will be done here on earth as it is done in heaven. Hallelujah. These scriptures help us to see what matters most to God. The advancement of his will on earth as it's done in heaven. Hallelujah. He wants us to make the king. In fact, if you read it from the Living Bible, let me read that from the Living Bible for, sake of, for the sake of clarity. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse. Let me read from, uh, yeah, verse 33. He said, from verse 31, he says, So don't worry at all about having enough food and clothing. Why be like the hidden? For they take pride in all these things and are deeply concerned about them. But your heavenly father already knows perfectly well that you need them and he will give them to you if you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to. Hallelujah. One other translation said, if you make the advancement of God's kingdom your primary concern or your number one priority. If you give him first place in your life and live as he wants you to. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Whatever he says, he means it. And he will bring it to pass if we fulfill our own side of the bargain. Look at the promise of God, he said, in everything you do, in 2017, in everything you do, what is another, another uh, way of saying everything? All things, everything means everything. In everything, no matter what it is, in your own personal life, in the life of your family, in your place of work, everything you do, he said, do what? Put God first. And he will do what? He will direct your path. And he will crown your efforts with success. How many of you want your efforts to be crowned with success this year? Now I've just shown you the secret. Put God first in all you do. There's a tendency and a temptation, constant temptation for us to be more concerned about our own selfish interests and desires uh, more than we are interested in God's own interest and the interest of our neighbors and that is our greatest undoing in our nation Nigeria today when we put the interest of God first and the interest of others first we live life the way God meant for life to be lived. 
And God will commit himself to being faithful to us and fighting our battles for us. Like I said in the earlier ones of yesterday, or the earlier ones of today, by, by the way, I, I said God's promise to Moses is his promise to us by extension. What did he tell Moses? He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. If God had promised us his presence and we uh, take that to heart and mean business with God and do the things that God wants us to do, to, have, to retain his presence in our life All the challenges of life will come But they will not overwhelm us There's no promise anywhere in the Bible That you are not going to have problems Because God is with you No, Jesus said in the world you shall have tribulation <laughs> This is what the world, it's not heaven It's only in heaven you don't have problems But on earth we have problems As long as we are alive we have problems but the dif difference is that if the presence of God is with you, he will help you through your problems. Shout hallelujah. He will help you out. He will give you victory. And how we need God's presence so desperately in our personal life, in, in our uh, nation this, uh, this year. Amen? Another way of putting God first in our life is to recognize that all we are and all that we own belongs to God. All that we are and all that we have belongs to God. We, we, God owns us. We are his property. Hallelujah. And everything else we own. When we recognize that and live in the light of that, that is putting God first. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. The scriptures say, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. This is what I call divine ownership. You are owned by God. Because he has purchased us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible said that we are all conceived in sin. And as a result of that, we are meant to spend the eternity in hell. But God... Who is not willing that any of us should spend eternity in hell Came down in the person of his son Jesus Christ To take our place on the cross Because the Bible said the wages of sin is dead that, uh, The soul that sin shall surely die He came down and died that death on the cross for us And made a new and living way Through which we can be received into his kingdom Forgiven of our sins And given the power to become his children so the Bible said today that as many as will receive him into their heart By the help of the Holy Spirit To them he will give the power to become God's children Hallelujah Hallelujah And when that happens You become a child of God Your sins and your iniquities of the past is forgiven Your present life is made meaningful And your future is secured Shout hallelujah in Proverbs chapter 3, again, verse 9 and 10, there's something uh, the scripture said there that I want to draw your attention to. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10, about putting God first. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. Hallelujah. Do what? Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. 
Verse 10, it says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. If you read that from the Living Bible, it reads, Honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income, and it will fill your bands with wheat and belly, and overflow your wine, wine vat, with the finest wine. Hallelujah. This, the scripture is talking about putting God first. How else do we put God first in our life? To love God wholeheartedly. Love God wholeheartedly. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, I am going to read from verse 34 to 37. Matthew 22. Are you there? From verse 34 to 37. But when the Pharisees had had that he had put the, Pharisees, uh, the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. But that day, he said, This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So, I don't have a, a complicated message for us in the new year. God didn't tell me that. Um, how do I put it now? You know, we have a lot of prophets in the country that we want to tell you that uh, before the end of January, the economy will boom. <laughs> Amen? Because they are look, they're just looking for attention. That is not to say that God will not help us with our economy. Amen? But we have to be realistic. We have to be, the, the, the encourage our people to do the right thing so that we expect God to do his own part. So I charge each one of us today that as we have entered into the new year, we should make as our priority putting God first in all we do. You know, one of our problems is our nonchalant attitude toward these things. Because if you mean business with God, God will mean business with you. If you take it to heart and take it as a challenge to say that this is the way that I'm going to live this year, in everything that I do, the first thing will be to find out what will God want me to do in this situation. What does this word say? What shall I do to honor and glorify God? He said, let it be an abomination unto me if I don't honor those who honor me. If you honor God, God will honor you. And may you honor God in 2017. So that it will be well with you. There are several of us whose life would have been glorious, decorated by God. Outstanding testimonies. If it is not because we turned our back on God and we are doing our own thing, living as if there's no God in the world. Living as local almighties. The Holy Spirit has brought you here today to show you a way of life. That if you will return to the almighty God, your creator, and submit yourself to him and turn away from your wicked ways, he will decorate your life. Several of us are stranded in life, stranded in the wilderness of life, struggling. God wants to free you from that struggle. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants to decorate your life. God wants to put meaning into your meaningless life. God wants to guarantee you a better future. If you will honestly, sincerely, humbly turn away from every known sin and submit yourself to him. Through Christ Jesus and ask for forgiveness and cleansing. The Bible says as many as we do that, to them he will give the power to become God's children. Hallelujah. 
he will change your life he will forgive your past he will make your present meaningful he will make your future glorious you are here this morning and you want to give him the opportunity to step into your life and change your destiny forever i want us to all stand as we pray you are here this morning you want to give god a chance to turn your life around to put a smile on your face to give you a living testimony from henceforth life attractive and make your life glorious you are here today you want to give him that chance to walk begin a walk in your life that you'll be thankful for the rest of your life put up your hand i want to personally pray for you before i pray for people generally god bless you my brother god bless you do we have any other Jesus, I surrender. you want me to do that to pray for you come 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 and meet me i want to personally pray for you before we go. god bless you God bless you, my brother. I know that there are several others. Don't allow the devil to rob you of this a lifetime opportunity to be transformed by the power of Jesus. For your sins to be forgiven, for your name to be written in the last book of life. stretch forth your hands toward these precious ones and let's pray for them let's ask that God will visit them that God will bless them with the miracle of salvation you to pray this prayer of repentance after me and dear brothers who are out here and be sincere pray say pray it as i pray just follow me my father and my god say it out loud my father and my god thank you for your love towards me thank you for coming into this dark and sinful world to take my place on the cross of calvary where you died for the forgiveness of my sins my lord jesus thank you for dying for me come into my heart right now by the power of your holy spirit wash me clean of every sin forgive me make me your child give me grace to serve you the rest of my life satan i reject you and your evil ways from today, I surrender my life to Jesus. And I will serve him the rest of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing me, for forgiving my sins, for making me your child in Jesus' name. I want to personally pray for you. Sovereign Lord, I thank you for these precious lives. It is written in your word that as many as come to you, you will no wise cast out. Receive them unto yourself. And let the miracle of the new birth take place in their hearts right now. Make them your children. Give them grace to serve you the rest of their lives. Cause your face to shine upon each one of them. And may your goodness and may your message be their portion today in the rest of their lives. I bless you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Give them a hand as they go. Just, just follow him. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands as we pray. Gracious Father, just as our faces are different, so are our various needs and challenges. 
And you said that whatever touches us touches the very apple of your eyes. Lord, for the privilege of coming into your presence today for this service, touch each one of these lives. Meet each one of these at the very point of their needs. According to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You are the almighty God with whom all things are possible. Whatever challenge they are going through right now, Father, make their impossibilities possible in the name of Jesus. Make their impossibilities possible in the name of Jesus. Every sickness and every disease the devil are put in their bodies and they are struggling with, I uproot right now from their body. I command you sickness and disease in these bodies, die at your roots, disappear by the power of the risen Christ, go and return no more in the name of Jesus. Father, you specialize in making impossible situations possible. Go before them, level the mountains, straighten the crooked ways, smoothen the rough ways, cause men and women to go out of their way to favor them. I bless you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen.